All right, what's up, guys? So Bella Thorne came out in this interview, and she talked about some stuff that, honestly, some people probably would understand and some people probably thought could be a possibility. But there's other people, honestly, that probably wouldn't really know what she's getting ready to talk about would happen, especially to her and other people in the industry at such a young age. Let's check this out. Let's hear what she had to say. I mean, if you read the book, you'll be like, Haha, transitioning from Disney to this was easy. I don't know. Getting molested for from your six to your 14 seems like way harder circumstances or being physically abused all the time seems like a much more difficult situation than have paparazzi following you since you were 12. I don't know. I was still being molested when paparazzi were still following me. So it's pretty hard in my mind to think about these big flashlight photographs and everyone thinking they know me and talking about me but having no idea the type of mistreatment that I was still dealing with at that time. Tough. When you think about that, she said from 6 to 14, you're talking 8 years. 8 years of molestation. Of which, from what it sounds like, she couldn't do anything about. Couldn't go nowhere. Had nothing. And the thing that I think about when I, when, when, when I hear this story... But then you think about who she was as a little girl and some of the shows that she played in as a little girl, like somebody's daughter, someone's child. You know what I'm saying? When I think about that, it made me think and realize that what we see, guys, on the Internet, anywhere, what we see. More times than not, it's not really what's happening. It's not really what's going on. That's why it's important to walk by faith and not by sight. That's literally kind of what that means. That, that's literally definition and proof, kind of using this situation of what that means, what that truly means. Because faith is not only just walking in kind of ignorance and just going forth and saying, God got me, God got me, not, not being ignorant and just doing that. No, 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 no. Faith is understanding that you are seeking wise counsel before you do something. You are going to God about it and you leave it with him and you move forward in peace. Once you get that peace, once you get that, that, that comfortable feeling, you know, you move forward in peace, trusting and believing that you're good. But the problem with these industry kids, there was never that opportunity. There was never even that time. Even then, heck, God's not even being exposed and 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 taught to these people at this age because the industry that they're under it, it's it's a very self-seeking industry for more than one reason uh, money you know what i mean like and and that starts to make me think like as she's explaining from age six to 14 years old or whatever as she's explaining that in the story i want to go back so we can like hear that and you really like, like, see her emotion as she's talking about it, like, from six, bro, like, hear that, and I, and I have a question that's shocking on it that I'm gonna ask after that, but let's run this back. Getting molested for from your six to your 14 seems like way harder circumstances or being physically abused all the time seems like a much more difficult situation than physically abused all the time. The way that she's saying it, you can tell it was almost as if, like, she didn't get a break. There was no break. There, there, was, there was no time for her to relax off of it. There was no time where someone wasn't molesting her or, or inappropriately, you know, approaching her or what have you. But what makes me think when I hear that from 6 to 14 years old, man, She's explaining this in a way that is if she was all alone. Where are the parents? Like, where were her parents? I don't know too much about her parents. I don't know if maybe they just weren't there. Maybe she had a single parent, maybe single dad, single mother. I don't know. I don't know much about her parents. But just even in all this time, you know, as she said, during that time, there was even paparazzi. And I'm going to let you hear that, too. There was even paparazzi there with her and she was still being molested so it's like even you look at some of the pictures that these little kids were taking during the time and sometimes their faces look uncomfortable 
Um, I know there's a lot out with Miranda Cosgrove, you know, when she was a little kid and, and that whole uh, show that they, that she did, iCarly, and the uh, producer of that show, it, what have you, I believe there was some stuff going on about that or whatever, and some of the pictures that she has on there with him, it seems very uncomfortable too, and that would be something that paparazzi was around, you know, taking these pictures, but you're being molested while paparazzi's there, so it's like, no one's there to save you, it's almost like everyone in the industry has an understanding that we are not here to save you, we're just here to pretty much continue to look out for our better good, continue to look out for our self-seeking desires, whether that means molestation, whether that means what's essentially happening, you know, because it's the, it's like, where are her parents? Her parents aren't there. Are they out spending her riches? Because she's a kid. So it's not like she can go at six years old spending the money that she's making. So it's like her parents are kind of over these, these kinds of things until she's of age, I believe. So it's like, where were they off? Were they off kind of just enjoying the paychecks? And just trusting that, oh, yeah, we're taking care of her. She's fine. She's fine. Does she like does she have to become estranged? Like, did, did, is she never able to speak to them? That's what makes me kind of worry about, you know, the industry, you know, kind of things like that, because I even remember like as a little kid, you know, a lot of people wanted to get on TV as kids. I remember even I wanted to get on Disney Channel, man. I wanted to be on Disney Channel. I thought it was cool. You know what I mean? You get your own show and. I don't know. I just thought it was cool. But what's sad about it is, is that if her parents weren't around or or if she felt like she couldn't um, like speak to her parents about it, but her parents are getting all the money for everything that she's doing. It kind of almost makes it seem like this is like a form of like child prostitution. You know what I mean? Like it, it starts trickling in, into that because. How does she not have a safe space for eight years? No one, like, the, the, like no one, bro. The, and, and that's what the Bible's talking about when it says, like, uh, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Because it's the desire that people have. It's the love, like the Bible is saying, to have money, to be rich, to be wealthy, that causes them to do evil things hurting kids, molesting them, physically abusing them, verbally probably even abusing them. Things that we didn't see, of course, they ain't going to stream that in the middle of the episode. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, it, it, it's interesting to think that. It, it, it's very interesting, you know what I mean? Because people usually say that, oh no, you know, you shouldn't be rich, Christians can't be rich, and Christians can't be wealthy. And like I always say, God definitely calls us to a certain level of abundance. He's an abundant God, and he definitely blesses his people. But sometimes the love to be too wealthy and the love to have more and more and more and never be content, it causes people to do evil things like we're seeing what happened here that Bella Thorne's talking about. She had no protection. She had no covering. There was like no one anywhere that was able to help her out. Let's hear what she says about that. Paparazzi following you since you were 12. I don't know. I was still being molested when paparazzi were still following me so it's pretty hard in my mind to think about these big flashlight photographs and everyone thinking they know me and talking about me but having no idea the type of mistreatment that i was still dealing with at that time tough they can't trust anybody think it just like really think about this like think about like six-year-old seven-year-old eight-year-old kid having no one to trust nowhere to go to you know, like I said, it's not like they're teaching God to him. So she's probably not having an understanding that she could just pray right there. But even then, it's like, could I even be taken out of this? Because sometimes in that industry thing, it's like I said, the parents, they're getting kind of all the money. They're kind of like managing the funds. So they just push them on in there. You know what I mean? Because they get to live a good life vicariously through their popular famous child if you will but she had no coverage man no protection these kids can't trust anybody paparazzi managers anybody they were working with there was an opportunity for them to be physically abused that 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 in my opinion is completely terrible and like i said some of us we wanted this lifestyle but paparazzi does it in a way where it's, it's like a cycle. Paparazzi does it in a way where they take these pictures and they expose them living these lavish lives. And we see the best versions. Like she said, people really don't even know us. They act like they know. They think like they know. They see a post and they think that they know my life. But no, that was all calculated because they want us to kind of lust after that. They want us to kind of, 
desire that lifestyle. And that's how eventually they keep that cycle going of having people coming in that revolving door. But as a lot of people are saying, bro, the grass ain't greener on that side. And there's really nothing good that anybody is really enjoying when it comes to having to work at that industry, which is why a lot of people have been starting to move independent. But that's that, that that's really interesting because you really didn't know what this thing involved. And then to hear people talk about this and they had nowhere to go. So they really just had to endure it. They, ju they just had to deal with it. That's when I just say, thank God for his, you know, omnipresence. The fact that even though she might have not known him, he knew her. And yes, it's unfortunate that a lot of people go through this and a lot of people are probably still going through it right now. It's unfortunate. But I'm thankful and it is a good thing that she's able to speak about it now. Like, like it didn't go so far and things didn't become so destructive that she's no longer even here to kind of share a testimony or even share her story of coming out of it and being able to be out of that. Like she said, it is better, you know, this transition, just kind of being away from Disney Channel and Disney and everything that she was doing because Disney's got some crazy stuff going on. Uh, you know what I mean? I know they say, you know, I was seeing on the internet when I was kind of looking up and doing research on this video, I was seeing how a lot of people talk about Disney, you know, when you look at the sign, Walt Disney, you know, it was always interesting how their uniqueness you know, people hide things in like artistic ways. It was very interesting how in the Walt Disney, you know, sign, there was the 666 mark in there. And also they say that Mickey, you know, Mickey Mouse, which is essentially Walt Disney's mascot, if you will. When you look at the Mickey Mouse and you look at how they spelled Mickey, they did it in another artistic way where... You know, you would never really see someone write letters like this. But the thing about Mickey is when you flip the word upside down, it um, it spells wicked backwards, upside down. You know, it's wicked. And uh, it's like little tricks like that, man, like little schemish, you know, small things like that. And it's like you they 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 mask guy, they, they like disguise themselves under this mascot of like, we're here for the children, but. I mean, they are here for the children, but not in the way that they're putting themselves out there that they are, man. But thank God for coverage on people like this, man. Just thank God, like I said, for his omnipresent coverage because it's important for situations like this where, like I said, where were her parents? Where were her parents? We knew paparazzi managers and anybody in that area, in that arena, they weren't helping her because they were contributing to the downfall and to the destruction, if you will. But where were her parents, man? Keep kids covered keep kids covered it starts there you know because had this all been avoided yeah she's here to tell the story but imagine a life where she didn't have to tell that story imagine a situation where this didn't have to be her reality or something that she had to deal with even into adulthood because some for some people these things just don't end just because you came out of them sometimes there's life hindering marks you know and scars that come from something like this, but keep it prayed up, man. I pray for all of you guys. Honestly, I appreciate it for if you guys stayed this long. That's all I got for you on this one. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next one, man. Till then I'm out.